Welcome to the Seattle Aquarium, located in the heart of the city and home to some of the most fascinating creatures of the Pacific Northwest. From the moment you step inside, you'll be transported to a world of underwater wonder where you can explore the depths of the ocean without ever leaving the city. As you make your way through the aquarium, you'll be greeted by a variety of fish. From the colorful and vibrant tropic fish at the Coral Reef exhibit, to the seals and the bird and mammal exhibit. The real star of the show at the Seattle Aquarium is undoubtedly the sea otters. These playful and adorable creatures have captured the hearts of visitors for years. Welcome to our special interview with the Aquarium Supervisor of Birds and Mammals, Mariko Bushcamp. Today we'll be discussing some of the most beloved creatures of the Pacific Northwest, the sea otter. Let's head inside and meet Mariko. My name is Mariko Bushcamp. I am one of three bird and mammal supervisors for the Seattle Aquarium. From training the otters to cleaning their cages, Mariko does it all. Let's ask her where we can find sea otters in the wild. The southern sea otters are just off the coast of California. The northern sea otter starts in Washington state, all the way up through Alaska, over the Russia, and then historically Japan, and they're just starting to come back to Japan. Sea otters thrive in kelp forests and cold waters, making the Pacific Ocean a perfect place for them to live. Shockingly, otters don't have any blubber to help keep them warm. Let's ask Mariko how they survive. Sea otters are actually the only marine mammal that don't have blubber, and they're also the smallest marine mammal, which makes it more difficult to stay warm. So what they, they have two mechanisms to be able to live in those really cold waters. The most important one is probably their dense fur. The dense fur of sea otters makes them practically waterproof. You can find up to 1 million hairs per square inch on their bodies. That's a thousand times denser than our own. Other a mechanism that they use to survive in cold water is having an extremely high metabolism. They eat 25 to 30 percent of their body weight every single day, which is a crazy amount, um, which means they have to also hunt for that amount of prey items. So it's a it's a very hard life to be a sea otter. Wow, being a sea otter doesn't sound easy. Now imagine having a baby on top of that. Mariko mentions a mom with the pup has to eat even more. Let's find out. So. Normally, um, I mentioned that sea otters eat about 25 to 30% of their body weight every day. But a lactating female is going to be bumped up to 33 to 40% of their body weight, which makes it very difficult to hunt when you have this pup that you're supposed to be taking care of. So it's a full-time job, um, as most moms are. <laughs> Being a mom sounds hard. No wonder mine's always mad at me. Sorry, mom. Up next, Mariko has a cool fact to share about sea otters that most people don't know. So sea otters have um, 32 teeth, same as humans, um, and they have a lot of really strong um, molars so that they can kind of crunch open a lot of their prey items. It's very useful for opening things up like mussels, um, sea stars or abalone that have really tough exteriors. Wow, I wish I had that strong of teeth. And that's only the top of the list. Sea otters eat so much more, including sea urchins, crabs, and clams. They're not very picky eaters. In fact, it's been documented in Washington state that sea otters eat more than 130 different prey items. Talk about a buffet. Let's switch it up and talk about why sea otters are so important to our ecosystem. A sea otter is considered a keystone species, very important. If sea otters are underpopulated or let's um, during the fur trade when there were basically no sea otters, then sea urchins are a primary food source for sea otters. So once you remove the sea otter, sea urchins will reproduce to a very high degree and they will eat all of the kelp forests. So kelp forests provide homes to many, many animals. It's a very rich habitat. And so without the sea otter, those kelp forests go away. Sea otters are so valuable to our ecosystem, a value that caught the eye of many. Let's talk about the fur trade, where sea otters almost went from a keystone species to an extinct one. Uh, the fur trade started in about the mid 1700s, where people realized how valuable sea otter pelts are. So we talked a little bit about how they have the densest fur on the planet. Well, that also makes their fur really highly desirable by people, unfortunately still today, um, but much more so in the 1700s. As a result of the fur trade, we saw populations of sea otters drop from hundreds of thousands to only a few thousand. 
Fortunately, due to several repopulation efforts, sea otters are slowly growing in numbers. Here are a few programs that are helping the cause. Alaska Sea Life Center, they do amazing work both for educating the public on sea otters, especially because there's the people who live there live very close to sea otters. And then Monterey Bay Aquarium in California also do a lot of work. And Monterey Bay Aquarium is actually the only facility that, have, that has a surrogate program for sea otters where they have uh, surrogate sea otter moms that teach these pups how to be a sea otter. Due to the facilities like the ones just mentioned, we have the ability to explore all sorts of marine life, especially sea otters. Without them, we wouldn't be so lucky. Here are a few resources you can explore to learn more ways to help keep our marine life safe.